Okay, here we go. ST changes lesson next to the last one in level one. When you run a 12 lead on your patient in the hospital 12 lead and maybe some field 12 leads, you get some rhythm strips at the bottom. Those are kind of helpful. So you get a chance to see the same lead for 10 seconds all the way across the paper as opposed to four different leads at two and a half seconds apiece, and you really can't see rhythm very well, so we call it a rhythm strip. Most field monitors don't have room for that, so after you run your 12 lead, you may also want to run a rhythm strip so that you can see a longer length of the same lead. And that is one way to work around uh, some of the limitations of field 12 lead monitors. The field 12 lead monitors will give you an interpretation. I really think the field 12 lead monitors do a great job at measuring intervals. So I love to use them for the PRI, the QRS, QTC. They pick axis if you're an axis person that's looking for, for an actual number. They do a great job on that, but they do a really crappy job of assessing what that rhythm is and if there is or is not a STEMI. That's what we're for. We can do that. And so, <clears throat> yeah, what's the machine say? Well, I wouldn't turn that off. I wouldn't completely ignore that. I would use that as like a second opinion that I would go ahead and prove it right or wrong. Um, but, boy, those the machine calls things atrial fib that just aren't, and it, and it picks STEMI sometimes and it misses them other times. And so we can do a better job than the 12-lead machine. And that's not just a Zoll algorithm. I've shown a Zoll 12-lead here. That goes for all of them, and the EKG experts say that we need to be reading the EKG for, for STEMI, but go ahead and let the machine do the measurement for you. It's pretty good at that. All right, um, next, next thing here, key point is what's the J point? Because we're looking for ST segment elevation or depression. We need to know where the ST segment starts. It starts at the J point. It's where the QRS is over, where the QRS has come back, to the isoelectric line, the baseline. The J point is the start of the ST segment and it moves up into the T wave. And so we need to, if we're going to talk about ST changes, we got to figure out where the ST starts. Starts at the J point. Here's some um, pictures of ST elevation and depression. And the thing for you to remember here is that we are looking for ST elevation. Now, whether that is actually ischemia, injury, or infarct, not worried about that from our perspective. We're hunting for ST elevation. And so you got to find out the J point and then see if the ST segment is up off the baseline or depressed down below the baseline. That's ST elevation. Here's some ST depression. In the advanced, um, like level two and level three courses, we'll talk about, you know, the shape of that ST depression and we'll get into T wave changes and Q waves and all that kind of stuff. And that's great, that's cool, it's R-rated, it might even be X-rated. This is G. You gotta know ST elevation and ST depression. The bottom line here is that we ought to be identifying STEMI cases in the field. ST elevation is the key. And then we want to take ST elevation, <clears throat> couple it with some knowledge of what walls match up with what leads on the 12 lead leads and walls kind of stuff. And we can identify these STEMIs and actually locate them. One of the things about STEMI identification is that we need to have ST elevation in contiguous leads. So it's one thing to identify ST elevation. And you could say, well, I have a sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block, and I have ST elevation in lead two and lead three and lead AVF. That's one way to give an interpretation. There's nothing wrong with that. But it would be helpful for you as a PG or better medic to know that that lead two and lead three and lead AVF are contiguous. They're all looking at the same wall and that's an inferior MI that we're looking at. So you can um, look at this on the PDF. You can think about contiguous leads. Contiguous is an important concept and they are either physically next to each other, like on the chest, or they are looking at the same wall as in the limb leads. And so think about this concept of contiguous leads 
because that's what allows you to say you have a STEMI. It's easy to say you have ST elevation, but do you have it where uh, in contiguous leads where you can say now that you have a STEMI? Here's a chart you're going to need to know. We're going to show it to you in about 17 different ways, and you ought to start drawing this on napkins at lunch, and you probably ought to just grab a piece of paper sometimes and draw it, and you know what? We've got some sidewalk chalk, and we'll have you draw this on your way to your car for lunch break when you come to the face-to-face -face class. And we will do all kinds of crazy things to help you learn this. But you've got to know this chart. Now this chart is laid out in the same configuration as a 12 lead. You'll notice that lead 1 is first on the top left, lead 2 is below it, lead 3, then AVR, AVLVF, then the V leads. And this is how a 12 lead, a standard 12 lead is laid out. And this is how we want you to learn this chart. And so what we're writing in there is the name of the left ventricular wall that's involved. The lateral wall, the inferior wall, the septal wall, the anterior wall. And this, this screen shows all that information very, very clearly. You can also see that AVR doesn't look at any left ventricular wall. You can also see that the posterior wall is not mentioned. So there's no lead looking directly at the posterior wall. And none of these look at the right ventricle. You can have an infarct of the right ventricle that's bad, but you're not going to see it on this standard left-sided 12 lead. So there's just some concepts there, a lot of information in that last couple of sentences, but those are important things uh, for us to know.